Hey, it's Mark from Build Training. So this week on MacBreak Studio, I'm going to show you how to do this little freeze frame effect in Final Cut Pro. So this is a fun technique and it will really work with any object, including a person, as long as it's not occluded by something else. I chose something simple so the masking wouldn't be too complicated. So here's my clip where I throw the ball up one, two, three times, and I've dropped in markers where the ball reaches its apex each time. You'll also notice at each marker that the ball is in focus and there's no motion blur. To do that, I increase the shutter speed or actually decrease the shutter angle of my camera. I set my camera up to shoot at shutter angle rather than shutter speed. So at 1080p 30, which is this project, that's a 60th of a second with a 180 degree shutter angle. I drop that to about 45 degrees. So I'm really shooting instead of a 60th of a second, about one two fortieth, something like that, just so that I get the ball to stop and we don't see any motion blur. It'll make the masking much easier. So with these markers here, all I need to do is with my playhead over that first marker, I'm gonna press Shift F, which is the reveal in browser command. That locates the clip in the browser and puts the playhead in the browser at the same point as the playhead in the timeline. From there, I'm gonna press Option F, which will connect a freeze frame at that exact point in time. So now I have that freeze frame right here. I'm gonna drag that freeze frame back to the beginning and I'm gonna make sure it goes one frame past my marker. So I'll just drag it out and one frame past the marker so that when I'm on the marker, I'm actually looking at that freeze frame. That is step one. Step two is to mask out everything but the ball. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the effects browser and down to my masks category and add a draw mask. Now you could do this in motion as well, and motion does give you some more options in terms of animation, but the draw mask is very similar to the masking capabilities of motion and does a really good job. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna zoom in closer, let's say 400%, and I'll use this little display here to get in close to the ball. And then I just need to click drag control points to mask the ball. And it's not perfectly round, otherwise I could use the shape mask Once that's done, I can adjust any of those control points. If I click here, I can hide those control points and just see what the ball looks like and maybe add a tiny bit of feather, maybe one pixel. Now I'll press Shift and the Z key to fit the entire image back in the viewer. And now if I scrub through, we see that ball hanging in the air and I'll play it. So this week on MacBreak Studio, I'm gonna show you how to and because we lined it up with the frame where it originally reached its apex, it perfectly matches and then joins the ball. All you need to do is repeat the process for the other ones. Shift F, Option F. I'll press Shift Z to fit everything. I'll move this guy back, forwards, and one more frame. To make it easy, I'll just tap the period key to move it one frame and then trim the beginning back one frame and then mask that one. And the same for the last one. Shift F, Option F, drag it back, extend it to the marker, period to move forward one frame, trim the beginning back to the start, and mask it. It's Mark from Build Training. So this week on MacBreak Studio, I'm gonna show you how to Now, of course, you don't need to keep them there the whole time. So I'm gonna select all three of these clips, make a compound clip by pressing Option G, and I'll call it Baseballs. And now that they're contained in one clip, I'll move the playhead to where I want them to be up in the air, say right about here. I'll set a keyframe for position, then I'll move back in time, 
and drag on position Y to drag them out of the frame. Hey, it's Mark from Build Training. So this week on MacBreak Studio, I'm going to show you how to... If I want to adjust the timing, I can select that clip, press Control V to reveal the keyframes, and I can move one or both of those keyframes to adjust the timing. Now, if you were to do this in motion, you'd have more flexibility in how smooth that animation is with position, rotation, and scale because you can manipulate the keyframes. But Final Cut's great with the masking capability it has, and you can do some nice, quick visual effects very easily. Tell us what else you'd like to see. Leave a comment below. Subscribe. We'll see you next week here on MacBreak Studio.